Mr. Speaker, I rise to support um, the budget um, set before this house. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. McIntyre, the Minister of Finance, and his team, and also the cabinet colleagues for preparing this, um, this budget. Um, <clears throat> really and truly, we are, we are indeed, um, from what I gathered from, from the Minister of Finance's um, speech uh, last week, that we are really building a dynamic Dominica, a, a resilient country, and uh, we are doing so by creating very robust and, and, um, and, and very strong frameworks and um, policies. And I think um, those, will be, those will be affected by internal forces, but also by what's happening in the international world. So after listening to the, to the Minister of Finance, it is clear that the uh, number of components to billion uh, of the continuing building of our region in Dominica. Um, and those tie very nicely with um, with the, the ministry I'm charged with um, leading. Um, within the Ministry of Environment, we do have environmental coordination, forest, wildlife, and parks, Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation, uh, constituency empowerment, kind of affairs, and the National Employment Program. And if we scan through the, the, the draft estimates here, 2024, 2025, we'll see a number of um, line items. And I speak to rehabilitation of the trails and eco sites. Um, the constituency empowerment, reforestation, um, enhancing the natural environment, uh, multi-purpose Kainago center, uh, waste management at the community level, um, strengthening our livelihoods in the Kainago territory. Uh, we, 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 do, we are doing also the phase down of hydrofluorocarbons and through the Montreal Protocol at the Kainago Development Fund. And so all of those uh, are, are bits and pieces that really help to magnify what should be a dynamic Dominica. And so the key co the components I speak to, um, uh, what, first and foremost, I think, is, is, the, the, is governance and the institutions of government. And so, <clears throat> so for example, in the, in the past few years, we, we had post-Hurricane Maria, we, we developed the CREED. We had the um, Climate Resilient Executive Agency uh, of Dominica, and that has now transformed into a uh, capital projects unit. So that's just a, that's a pillar thing, a key thing. Um, we also forced a lot of participation in government. So for instance, just recently, we, we had a number of pre-budget pre um, consultations, and that's important. So that's a key thing in, in developing a budget and having a resilient country and a dynamic Dominica. But also, we, we, we're also mindful that we have to have well-designed economic, um, economic policies. And so we, we, we ensure that we diversify the economy in the past few years to ensure that we do not depend on, or we do not let happen to what will happen during the colonial period, where we depended on a, a single product to move our economies. And so we, are, we have been able to diversify. We have moved into tourism, agro-processing, and we are growing our agricultural sector as we speak. And so this in itself is a very, very strong and very, very powerful um, policies that will help push our resilient country. Mr. Speaker, we also understand that um, education and, and, and the development of skills is, is very important in that movement. Clearly articulated in, in the budget address as well. Um, so we, we have to continue to provide a high level of education and access to that education. And it's very, very clear that in Dominica it is so visible, access to tertiary education through our Dominica State College. Um, every child having access to, to secondary school. Every child also having access to primary school. That's, that's a key thing. Um, um, even recently, we, the Minister of Education will expound on that as well, but we have been able to develop our skills. Um, the CVQ has been, been done. And as a matter of fact, the, 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 the comrade Henderson spoke to the new schools um, funded by the People's Republic of China, and we are, we are pushing to have the Goodwill School um, um, be that a premier um, skill development um, institution. So we are, we are doing this, very, very important. Um, and in my constituency, we are, we are doing this at the, the Scenic Group Primary School. It's going to be a brand new school, and we're hoping that um, that the little discomfort that we have now clustered all, all students at Salibia. Once that school is done in the next two years, we will, we will see a, 
a, a, a massive um, drive and moving forward in the cynical area. So we have this. But Mr. Speaker, also, we, we, can't, we cannot divorce from the conversation, the health and the health of our people. Um, the Minister of, of, of Health spoke this morning about all of the, uh, the, the, the issues that have been dealt with at the, at, at the health level. And so we know that we are ensuring that there's universal access to all our health services. That's key. If we are to build a resilient country, if we are, we are to build, continue to build dynamic Dominica. And also, <clears throat> we have seen a, a lot of investments in, in public institutions, in public facilities, uh, a number of health facilities across, across the country, brand new health centers, uh, in some cases, a hospital and health center in one constituency, for instance. So we, we, are, we are doing this. And, and we, we just heard recently that to, in the budget addressed by Honorable McIntyre that the news, news in structure is also being done. So we are, we are making headway in that light. And, and it is important to highlight those issues because being in a resilient country, as Comrade Henderson spoke about, it's not easy for us in a small island developing state, and especially being one that is very, very rugged. One that was good to my people because we, we dug bare the mountains and stuff and in the valleys that we survived. Uh, and I speak to the Kanago people. But one that has a lot of challenges for us when we have to develop our infrastructure. So, and so, so Mr. Speaker, as a matter, I, I want to shout out the, the people of, the, of that space, the, the Wakama to Pegua area. I want to pick them up. Yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, people, have been, uh, people have been good to me. Um, I've been good to, to the Dominican Labour Party. Uh, people I am continuing, and I am always happy to serve uh, once called upon. But, but Mr. Speaker, another pillar component that the Minister um, spoke about in the budget address is, is, is infrastructure. And that's important um, within the, the, the narrative of, of a climate resilient country. So we are, we are continuing to, to develop a modern, efficient, and sustainable infrastructure. And, and, and Mr. Speaker, I speak specifically about transportation, energy, and telecommunications. So communications, for instance, we, we, we know that uh, we have our, our access to, to, to internet services across the country. Uh, a, a story that we, we seem to forget after Hurricane Maria when everything was destroyed, we were able to bounce back. Um, the East Coast Road that traverses through my constituency, um, that, um, that traverses through the Casper's constituency, is, is a major investment. And we speak to uh, $127 or $28 million for that new road. And I just want to um, really, really thank the, the people of my area, my space, from Wakama to Pegua, for, for being patient. And, and some of them would have suffered a lot of, of dust and and a horrible road, but I think we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are getting to a, a finer place. And, and once that is done, we can see that tie nicely with the international airport, and, and people will have an easy line to the Kailago space um, to enjoy what we have to offer in terms of history and culture and heritage. But Mr. Speaker, we also, we also heard um, the, the, the minister speak to, to, um, to the, 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 the marina, the international airport, or, or new cruise, cruise village, or new cargo port with onshore um, um, power coming up for the geothermal. And, and also geothermal energy. One of the things we realize as small, small economies that we have to realize that the cost of fuel, which we have no control over, affects our economy, affects everything we do, from, from your home to production, and in factories and, and, food, and in the tourism sector. And so we're happy that we could, we could have those kind of infrastructure that will positively um, affect our resilient agenda. Mr. Speaker, um, what is also important in, in the infrastructure development is, is um, a level of equity across our, our wonderful island. And so, so for instance, we, 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 we see that a very narrow gap between the rural and the, and the urban areas. And so if you go to any community today, they will have the, the the nice homes and the, the good roads um, like anywhere else. And so there's a, there's a, there's a, since, since we've been pushing our resident agenda and Dynamic Dominica, we've been able to, to what is how we say it, we say we're narrowing the disparity between 
um, urban and rural areas. And but in so doing, we also we also do in the Roso the, the, the Roso development. It's it's a, it's a project we started about, but we are doing it, and that's that is a big significant part of our, our story as well. Because as the center of of of, of, of commerce and of government services, we expect our our, our town of Roso to be to be a, a, a shining example in the, in the region. And, and just to say just to say that. Um, um, Rousseau has a long story. It was called Sairi back in the days. Yeah, there was a massive cavity where the Catholic Church had everything now. Uh, it was a Calago settlement. Then, then French fellas used to come and call the wood to fix their boat and thing. Um, and when they see only the, all the Rousseau on the river, they say, well, I don't we call it Rousseau. Yeah, and then over time it changed and there was a, 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 the, the, the river was going kind of right through the tongue. Um, that's why they still waterlog in Rosu. We carry the underground with us, and there's a, and there's a myth being that that we, we we move the river back in the days. We are the poor the ancestors to move a river. Anyway, but um, so so we we are we are we are we are we are, we are moving that in that direction. And so infrastructure development is very 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 important in building our resident country. And but the, 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 the Minister for Trade also spoke to um, the road that leads from um, Rubier to Bagatelle. Or I think it's called the, the old days, the Grand Bay Road. That was it? Yeah. So we're doing that as well. And and these these are these are massive investments. I think the contracts have already been signed and we are, we are ready to roll. And I, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a, another major investment that, that will give give, uh, give us access to uh, a wonderful part of, of the island, because I don't know if you know, Mr. Speaker, that um, the the first settlers who came to island from Matnik, they, they come down Grand Bay, they come down Barrack or Grand Bay there, the Iraq Cross and thing, we've been that down a couple of times. Um, it's a long story. So the Grand Bay community has had this 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 um, very strong um, militancy as well, but we. It has a, it has a, a story that starts with um, Kalinago people, indigenous people moving forward. And so, Mr. Speaker, we we are we are ensuring that in the budget this year that we could we could do much more of those infrastructural work, and and that we can have um, the resiliency cemented in in our buildings across across our land space, um, Mr. Speaker. So we speak to new health facilities, new schools. Uh, we, we're, we're now speaking to the, the, the new tourism product, Nature Island brand, and, and that for sure has a selling point because we are uniquely placed to have uh, that um, um, positive impact on our, on our economy. Mr. Speaker, but one of the key things we have done in the past year and, and in the past few years under the, under the Dominican Labour Party government is uh, the, the sort of the, the social policies we put in place. And, and sometimes we take it for granted because these are things that we cannot easily see. We could see a bridge, we could see an airport, we could see a road, uh, we could see houses, but the, the, the social interventions are things that you, you cannot really see. And so, um, Mr. Speaker, I speak to, um, um, we have social safety um, net projects, pro programs for the most vulnerable of, of, our, of our state or of our, of our citizenry. Um, people who had a hard time. Um, and so there are people who get a, a non-pensionable allowance, uh, a little thing. But you, we may consider a little thing, but it's for, for a, a, a retiree, as we say, uh, somebody beyond the age of 60 um, who, who is not working and who has to survive. Who, who does need a little dignity and I'm not going to change in my pocket. It's my money. I think that is so important. So in terms of how we see that, it, it's not something we see visibly, but it's something that, that is entrenched and is deep. And I think uh, the people are so happy to have those sort of interventions. And not only that, Mr. Speaker, the older folks, we also have allowances that, um, that, that, that get down to children. Uh, we, are, we, are, we assist with school transfer grants. We, we make sure that our, our, our children look sharp with uniforms. They are equipped with, with, with textbooks. Um, and just a little back back to the to the elderly folks. We we have a wonderful program called Yes We Care program that deals with um, 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 
the, the elderly folks in, in, a, in, a, in a very humane way. And, and, and these are things that we have to celebrate, Mr. Speaker. Um, it, we have to celebrate them because they, they bring a level of dignity. So, so even if we're in a small state, uh, a tough economic t surviving tough economic times, but that, that the people can live with some dignity. So, Mr. Speaker, we, we have a lot of those um, social policies that, as the Labour Party government, we, will, we have done and we will continue to do. And as if you listen to the, 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 um, the Minister of Finance, you see that we are continuing those programs um, throughout our country. Um, Mr. Speaker, we have been able to, to, do, to connect on the international level. Because as a small island state, we can't, we can't build a dynamic Dominica or resident country without, without help from others. Um, and in so doing, we, we have built strong dip diplomatic and economic relationships with countries like the People's Republic of China, the Bolivian Republic of Venezuela, the, the, um, the Republic of Cuba. Uh, we have had wonderful relationships also with the UK, United Kingdom, and Canada. And, and there are a number of projects that. That, that we have done with um, just, have, just having good friends in the international world. And so these are not, are not things that we should take for granted. Um, these are things that, that, that really count, because in building a resilient country, in building a dynamic Dominica, a, 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 a pillar or a major component of this is how we continue to, to nurture and build um, international relations. Mr. Speaker, we, we have to continue to be resilient and be able to adapt. And I think that that, that, is, that, is, what, that is really the message of the, of the budget that we have before us. That we have to continue to be resilient and we have to continue to adapt to the times. I mean, Comrade here made, made the point that we, it's tough times out there. And we are we're able for the most part to ensure that the basic services across the country um, uh, they, they're provided to, to our citizenry. Um, a simple thing like uh, getting paid at the end of the month. Um, and if you, if, you, if you look at the wage bill, you, you'll understand. If you go through the estimates and look at the wage bill, it's a, it's a, it's a tidy sum of money to, to, run, to run and operate a country like ours. And, and so we have to take this into account. And so we are building resiliency. We have been able to, uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the resilience side, develop um, our disaster preparedness um, plans. We, we, uh, we have shelters built, built across the country. Uh, soon I'll be having one built in the Kainagu space. It will be called the, 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 the multi-purpose Kainagu emergency sh um, shelter. It will be a wonderful edifice. It will portray aspects of Kainagu heritage, etc. So we are doing this. Uh, and Mr. Speaker, we, we, we have our new Met office. Uh, recently we had, we had, I think, one of our first uh, broadcasting the proper thing. Now we have a screen and you you see the map and you see the wind blowing and things. We have that done, so we, we're ready. We have, yeah, man, yeah, man, high science. We have had early warning systems, so along our major rivers, we have, we have um, sensors to, to shoot, shoot messages back to the head office that, um, um, to give for flood warnings, etc. This has been done across, the, across the, 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 the island. And these are things I, they are little, some of them are little in the Zion, in the bush, and I don't people don't see them. Um, but I think these are some things we have to speak to more about because we, 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 we have to continue to, be, to stay ready in the event of natural disasters. Because it's very clear to me, and the science is very, very clear. And so, so sometimes when I go to this, those, those international forums and, 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 and fellows um, present their, their papers, and, and, and like my comrades say, their, their thesis on our vibes, um, it's true, the science is real. That, there will continue to be increasingly bad weather conditions in the, in the region. And it will be more frequent. It'll be more. And so it, it's, it's not a myth. Uh, so it's, it's real. And, and just recently we had the, hurric we had the hurricane barrier was coming, was coming through. I mean, I think it's the first time it affected on neighboring islands like that, I think. And they, I don't think they, they understand what we have to go through as a, as, as a, as a small country. But we have been tested, and we will continue to, to do that. But I think just having the important institutions ready, the Met Office and the Office of Disaster Management ready, with necessary tools, we can continue to build that resilient country and continue to move towards shutting that, that, that dynamic Dominica. Um, 
Being able to adapt is also important, like I said. Um, and so we are promoting economic resilience and, all, and that will withstand those major shocks. And the shock I speak about is not just the economic shocks and, and also pandemics, but also natural disasters. So we had to deal with COVID-19 recently. Just before COVID-19, we had to deal with, that, that was a pandemic with Hurricane Maria, um, tropical storm Erica. And if we go back in the last, to the last, in the last 20 years, we have been, been hit by so many um, weather, weather, weather situations that we, we have to be uh, more than ready to, to, uh, to, to, to stand up against those things. So, Mr. Speaker, um, within, the, within the constructs of, of this budget this year, we, we, we see very, very clearly that we are investing a, a lot of money in, in ensuring that we build our resiliency. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I, I have a passion for, for the environment. I'm happy to lead the, the Ministry of Environment, um, Rural Modernization, Can Accomplishment and Conservation Empowerment. I have to say that um, we, we, we are on a drive to continue to, to, um, to encourage fellow Dominicans to play their part, to be part and parcel of, of keeping our environment intact. Um, and so it is important that we, we look at, we look at um, Nature Island as not just a brand to speak about just because it's nature by, by itself, but to play our part in ensuring that we do um, ensure that that natural space can stay intact for future generations. So it's not cliche. So you say it a lot, you say, oh, we have a, uh, we have a, a priest in country. It's a tapestry of, 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 of nature from, from, from the turf to the surf, from the mountain tops to the, to, to, to the, to the coral reefs. We have to be able to ensure that they are protected. But I think we have to do a little more. We have to do a little more. And so, I, so those basic areas within the, within, within the, the, the presentation of, of, of Comrade um, uh, McIntyre, I think they are the important components. So, so briefly, uh, Mr. Speaker, I will, I, will, I, will, I will speak a little bit on, on the environment. And I think I just want to challenge us in, in this room and those who can listen or those who, those who will listen. That I think the, 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 the budget allocation for, for the Ministry of Environment is well placed. I think it is, it is, it is in tune with, with what we, we want to do at, at the ministerial level. Um, and so, like we say in, 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 in some of those, those, those um, major conferences, we, we stand at a, at a crucial sort of crossroad. And, and then because our choices today will affect what will happen down, down the road. So, because we know that the, the environment itself is, a, is, is very delicate, but the environment has a way of taking care of itself. If you look at Hurricane Maria, it, it ran for the country, it did havoc, but nature popped back up. Um, the, the troublesome thing is that um, how resilient can we be as people to play our part? Because I suspect nature can take care of itself. Nature will do its thing. The trees will grow back. It'll have a few copy on them, uh, vines. Uh, um, um, there'll be some dead wood. They'll fall over. They'll rot. They'll become fertilizer for the next set of things. Um, in, in, some, in some instances, nature, fire, fire takes care of, nat of, of nature. It, it burns down what is, not, what is not necessary and it sprouts back up. But um, <clears throat> we have to have a different mindset in how we treat with, with, with aspects of the environment. So, Mr. Speaker, um, we, we have to, to protect and, and preserve that gem that we have. And, and, and to say it again, maybe for the 10th time since I've been at, at Parliament, that, that that gem we have as Nature Island is one that was gifted to us by the, the Kainago warriors, um, held strong by the Negmao, and, and, and continue to be pushed forward with the, the modern Creole society we're part of. So that's important. We have, a, we have a unique opportunity in this time to, to play our part to ensure that that asset we have been given to our former ancestors can be left in, 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 in good standing for, for the future generation. So I just want to ask and, to, and say to the, the listening public and, and to the members of this house, Mr. Speaker, that all of you can continue to join our, our, our activities at the Ministry of Environment, a cleaner mile, um, sort your garbage at, at, at the source, separate them, cans, recycle. Um, um, that's play a part. Plant a tree, and we, we have been planting trees across the country. We are planting more than 300,000 trees. We, we, are, we 
uh, plant issues in the in the in the in the in the um, uh, in the Chemutai, yeah, in the hearts of the forest. And and some one thing I'm concerned about though is the fact that you don't see that because when you plant a mahogany tree, Mr. Speaker, you you aware of this? It'll take at least twenty years before you see a tree. And so it's not like building a house or a, or a school. It's a, it's a serious thing. And, this, we, and we have serious guys at the, at the, at the Division of, of Forestry who go out there every day, who hike the Zion, who walk the bush, through the Zeb Kuto and, and plant those trees. And they, they're planting on those trees on, on in the watershed areas so we can continue to have our nice spring water. For the, for the farmers, because yes, yes. forestry is the mode of agriculture, eh, Mr. Speaker? Yeah, you said Zeb Kuto. Yeah, that is uh, razor grass. Yeah, yeah yes. razor grass. Yeah. yeah, so, so I, I, mean, I mean, I know the, the Minister of Agriculture has a lot of wonderful products to be doing. He'll speak about it. We, um, Honorable Mark in there highlighted a few of them earlier on in, the, in his address last week. But forestry is the mode of agriculture. If you don't have land, we don't, we don't prepare the land and we don't protect the land and we have nothing to farm. Yeah? And especially in Dominica where we have limited flatlands and we have a lot of um, cliffs. I, I, I want to say the, the Creole thing, you know, the Cayenne and Fales. But yeah, mountains and cliffs. So we've been doing that. And we, we've been able to plant also trees along the rivers and, and, to, and to, to be able to plant what do you call, what do you call it in, the, in the science of environment, um, nature-based solutions, where you plant vetiver on, on, the, on the cliffs, you, you plant trees with strong roots. Uh, but that's a recent example. We had, we had World Environment Day on June 22nd. We went on to Kulibishri, but a night of fear. Uh, members on, on the other side were, were there, we planted trees, and burial came. Took it away. So, so it means that, but we're not daunted by that, Mr. Speaker. We're not daunted. This is the work we have to do because we are aware that nature has a way of, of doing its bit, but we have to continue to push um, as a country to ensure that, um, to ensure that we have a, a wonderful place. Mr. Speaker, I, I dare say, as a little tourism um, um, piece there, that Dominica Domin 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 is really a remarkable place. I mean, I mean, no wonder. I mean, no wonder when when the canal even came on the canoes, and you see that thing. Yeah. Yeah. They say, yeah, tall is a body. Yeah, Mamzelle nice. Yeah, Mamzelle nice. So, but but within 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 that wonderful space, we have so many small ecosystems, and and it is so important because the budget the budget is presented also is is a series of ecosystems as well with health and education and tourism, all of that. So, the, so seemingly, if we think of environment, if you think of Dominica, we can think of how we can treat with the budget. So just, just on Lico Dominica, we have seven different um, 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 vegetational states. We have little rural ones on the east, we have dry on the west, we have mountain um, forests, we have the rainforest, all of that. So in the very same way, Mr. Speaker, this is how we have to, we have to treat the budget, because every item within that budget here is, is of, of serious re relevance. And I will go back again to say that it is relevant in building a first climate resilient country. It is relevant for building a dynamic Dominica and, and building powerful, strong people. Mr. Speaker, um, so we have Tower Mountains. Um, we've been able to do some work here. But also we know there's a lot of work being done at, on, the, on the surf, which is our extension into, into the sea. So we, we're talking from turf to surf, from the land, down to the surf. Yeah. Um, we, are, we have had a work done, serious work done, serious work, Mr. Speaker, by the unit in blue economy. Um, um, Honorable Julian Defoe, demarcated our, our spoon well reserve. A massive thing for us. I don't think we talk about it enough. And because we have more than 200 spoon well leaves in our water just out there. Um, we, this is a serious source of income. It has been for many years for, for a few people. We need to expand on this. And, and so whatever we realize that whatever happens on the ground will definitely affect what happened on, on in, the, in the surf. And so in recent time, we have seen some bleaching of, of corals because of use of chemicals. But this, this is the work that we have to continue doing, and we have to continue to play our part. I think the onus is on, on every fellow Dominican to really um, participate in adventure. Um, because I, I, see, I see when I travel the, the, the country, 
I see a lot of um, unsavory practices. If you're driving in a car, toss a bottle out of the window. Um, people are having some meal in a box, they toss it out of the window. Um, the garbage cans are filled, the people dump stuff on the side of the garbage cans. Things that should not leave a village at all, like a lap of fig, well, a banana peeling, for instance. Uh, we'll end up in, in, the, in the landfill, there'll be some chicken bone. Uh, so some of those things can be managed at yeah. the home. And so we have, a, we have a unique opportunity now in 2024 to really just instill that. Because, Mr. Speaker, when I said earlier I want to join the activities, we have been working with the schools. I mean, and those, those, these young people are just so brilliant. Yeah. They have partnered with us, they, 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 they have been collecting plastic bottles, they've been recycling. And I, sometimes I feel, I, I used to be a teacher sometime for about 20 years in my life. I feel like I want to go back to the classroom because I find the young people, the children, have, they, 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 they can absorb those good practices so easily. When some of us are around this room and, and listening now, who are hard back man and woman, we, we, we can't understand a simple thing like that. Just manage the garbage from your home. Don't toss things from the window. Don't burn something in the backyard. And, and so we have to go back to the old ways. And the old way I speak to is, is one of, I, 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 is dear to my heart because it's a thing my grandmother used to do in the backyard. A little pit, put some of the biodegradable stuff, um, and then become a compost and she would use it. Um, the glass bottles and then we'd, we'd take it to collect water or make a vase with it. Um, and so these are the things that seem to be ancient practices, old practices, but the things that we need to do now because um, recycling is a very important thing. So, so within the Solid Waste Management Corporation, which I'm happy to, to lead um, um, there and to, to help, we, we have been doing a lot of work. We have outside support from the OECS, from the Norwegian government. We've been able to assist some communities with, with, with garbage bins. Um, the Tongue Rose of Garbage Beans, the apartment blocks across the country with garbage beans, just to get people involved. But I, I just want to zero in back to, to young people. The children are so excited to go around and collect stuff. Why can't we, as the, 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 the men and women, or the big men and women in the community, play our part? So it's an important thing that we have to continue to do. We we'll continue to push, Mr. Speaker. I think it is so important to, to do that because um, um, we, we may not have. Um, and each island if we do not honor those, those, um, those practices. And I think they are easier, easy things to do. Like we say sometimes, they are low-hanging fruit. All of a sudden, the low-hanging fruit may not be the best fruit. Yeah, yeah. Everybody touching that and looking at that. Yeah. Uh, but, but these are easy things to do, very easy things to do. And we can all play our part in doing that. So we, we can transform our environment, I think, to one that has to be that that is not of exploitation of the environment, but one of, of what, I, what I would like to call stewardship, that we have to ensure that we can do this. <clears throat> and so in the very same way, this, that's how we have to treat the budget, that we, 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 are, we are stewards of that, that piece of document. I, I heard it said in this room a couple of times that it's looking nice on paper. I heard that. But um, yeah, it has to be revived on paper. That's how you start, you start, um, you start um, doing stuff. You, you have to rationalize your thoughts and lay it down and then you scrutinize it and you move forward. So we have to take some time to, to go through this because I think in the budget it really appeals to a number of key pillars or, or key components that, that will make us resilient and will honor the, the, the massive drive. And we, have, we, have, we, have, we, we should not forget that after Hurricane Maria, the Prime Minister went out to the world in his wet shoes and stuff and said we're going to do a climate resilient country. Um, the, the funds for that wasn't always forthcoming, but we're able to do that. I think we have to honor that, that, that first move, and um, I think it's, it's on us. So, so, Mr. Speaker, education, it appears to me, not just about this budget, but on environmental protection is key. Education. And, and we at the, at the Ministry of Environment have been out there doing, doing the work. I think we can do some more. We should do some more. I think in the very same way that tourism is everybody's business, uh, I, I suspect environment is everybody's business. Because if you have an old environment, then there will be no, no tourism. If we have land degradation, no agriculture. No. If we have, um, if we have um, continuous sleep, sleeping up slopes, then all of it will get messed up. If we, if we do not um, um, manage garbage, then we have, we have pollution of all the sea and waterways. So, so I, I think 
more than ever, environment is everybody business. Um, <clears throat> so we are working with the schools, we are working with community groups, we have, we have had um, meetings and, and we, have been able, we, have a, we have a weekly program on, on DBS radio, Thursday at 11, from 11 to 12, environmental matters. And I think we have to participate more in those ventures. Mr. Speaker, so apart from, apart from just cherishing what we have in nature, uh, just going design and chill, we have to be able to protect it, more than that, cherish it, protect it. Um, I, I think because what makes Dominica unique as a tourism product is the fact that people can, like my ancestors, they could find a refuge in Dominica. Fresh water, fresh air, just a place to unwind. When you go to the glow show or hot water, uh, or my comrade Dennis um, speaks to um, um, sulfur spas. When you go to those areas, man, you, you unwind, yes? And, and so we have that wonderful space, and we have to ensure that um, it will continue to be a refuge and also a place that inspires a new generation of, of Dominicans. And the very same way again, the, back to the budget, the items that are, that are aligned to the Ministry of Environment, a simple thing like um, just getting rid of the hydrofluorocarbons are these things that come through air conditioning, simple thing, because that affects global warming, greenhouse, greenhouse gases. So we've been working with um, the, the customs um, division to ensure we can we can um, we can um, see stuff coming in and check them. We have done training with them. We have we have been able to um, get the necessary resources, computers, etc., to monitor um, because we have to we have to safeguard our, our borders. In the, in, the, in the very same way we safeguard in immigration, other people need for immigration. We have to ensure that we are inter we inter and this is in line with international conventions, and we have to ensure that we continue to do this. So. So the future of Dominica seems to be all right, seems to be good. I, I think we have to continue to play our part. But Mr. Speaker, um, during the last budget cycle, I, I had I a had task mandated to, mandated to me by the Labour Party government um, to work with the existing council, um, Canada Council. And I also had an opportunity to, to work with the then new Atkinson Village Council. Um, and so those two councils really make up my, um, the constituency, the cyber constituency. I just want to on the record, put on the record to say that I will continue that work as mandated. Um, I, I think I may be the, the premier champion of calling our goodness around that room. So I'm not going to stop just saying that. Yeah, I will continue my work. Um, I need good allies in that work. And if I don't get allies, I'll do it by myself. Uh, because I, I suspect I have allies in here already. Um, so I want to see that. That the, the work in the constituency is, is, um, is twofold because we are, we are, I'm serving an indigenous community with special um, um, heritage, uh, special heritage and culture. But also, I'm also serving a, a joint community that is similar to what, what happens in the rest of Dominica. So it's, it's a balance between those two. Um, in, the, in the coming budget cycle, Mr. Speaker, we will, we will look at completing the Darlington Link Road in Atkinson. Uh, we will knock off some books on the, on the Beach Road in Antrizel. Uh, we want to knock off a few homes in, in the Atkinson community, for the people of Antrizel and Atkinson. We will do those things. Um, in the last budget cycle, we, we, we did renovation works on, the, um, on the, the Atkinson Village, the Atkinson Community Center, which serves as an emergency shelter. And we have got funding from, from the GCF EDA project that sits with the ministry I am a part of. And we had, we had that money dispensed through the GEF, Small Grants Program. And so work has been done there. Um, and then across the, the, the Kanago space, we've been able to build a number of new homes. I mean, when you go to the Kanago territory, it's a, it's a, it's a far cry from what, what was there um, before 2020. I mean, we can see. So when I spoke earlier on about narrowing the disparity between urban and, and rural, that, the Canada Church is a classic example of this, where you have homes that are built like anywhere else. Um, they are, they're resilient, they're beautiful. The, the folks are taking care of those homes. They're very grateful for, for that intervention by, by the government. And um, they are grateful for that, that sort of work uh, what that we've been doing. We have had homes from the HRP for some time. We thought HRP was really, do uh, was really domiciling the Canada space. But I think more than 
half of those homes will be built there. Uh, we have had support from the European government, governments. Uh, we have been we are knocking off the rest, the six other EU homes um, that have been built. So we've been doing this. And we're twenty more minutes. Two zero. That's fine. Thank you. Um, but one of, the, one of the things I really want to speak to in the constituency that affects us in a, in a very positive way is um, the fact that um, uh, it's, been, it's been over a year now that we have, we, we have had, uh, we are allocated some monies for the Kanago folks in the name of the Kanago Development Fund. Um, and that sits at the aid bank. And people, are, of course, will have to go for the rigors of the banking system because we have to be accountable. Uh, and we have seen rich strides. People invest in, in, in home development, in, uh, in further in education. Um, some people have acquired assets, those are motor vehicles, etc. And I, it's something that will continue to grow. And I was kind for the budget here. I realized that we, the, the, the budget is committing to another million dollars this year. Um, um, one of the things we're doing, we're encouraging, is um, to support what's happening on the, on the national scene in terms of tourism. We have a kind of pillar that, that um, Honorable Charles has been pushing and championing. Although she's a non kind of way, but, um, um, but she's been pushing. Um, work, doing some serious work at the kind of bar now, doing the less college kind of trails over. Um, and so we, so, so we have um, a lot of work being done, and that will add to the, the Nature Island brand. And so we're doing this. Uh, and so we're happy that the fund itself. Because eh, we, we, we must not forget that there have always been the situation where the Carnago folks were disenfranchised because they had no access to the land as collateral. Yeah. We, we must not forget that. And this government have decided to allocate some money. And the government have decided to be the, the, um, the guarantor. Is it guarantor? Yes. Um, to, that, to that facility. So it's moving on. I just want to encourage my, my folks from the Carnago space to take, make, make use of that opportunity. Um, and, and to push the homestead program we've been doing. And as we speak, Mr. Speaker, we have, um, we have launched a, a Discover Kalinago website. Yes. Yeah. 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 www.kalinago.com. Yeah. You can go that now. We will link you up yeah. to all of the wonderful things you're doing across that space. And we also found the Ministry of Tourism and the PS of Tourism. Um, <laughs> it have language stuff in there. And, so it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful um, 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 investment we have made. Just to ensure that we keep protecting what is ours, but also making ourselves modern and more accessible. And I, I think, again, this is what the budget speaks about. How do we continue to grow a resilient country? How do we continue to make it dynamic, to make it a, a place where people want to come back and settle and, and invest? And of course, we, we have our CBI program. All of those they are helping us. We push our marina in the north. Um, the, so all of those things we, will definitely affect the, the, the cyber constituents in a positive way, um, Mr. Speaker. But um, we, we know for a fact that um, that um, small island states don't have it easy. So I really want to thank my colleagues here who, who are pushing our agenda for, for the last few months, um, because we know that climate change itself as a big thing have affected us in, in so many ways. Um, I mean, Minister Vince was Honorable Vince, or Comrade Vince, I'd rather call him, um, made it very, very clear that these are things that are, are so, so clear to us that um, as long as we, we take it for granted that, we, that, we, that they affect us. And so, so our nature island is, is affected by that climate change events, by those events. It, it, it disrupts our agriculture. Of course, they're natural disasters. Definitely impact our tourism um, if, we, if we don't keep it in check. There are health risks, of course. Um, Mr. Speaker, it, it, it sometimes can affect our simple thing like water, although we are bonded in water, but we know a simple event can, can like we see locally, can mash up Dawasco, a simple event. Um, so we have to keep that in check. And Mr. Speaker, and we know that those interventions, and, and Comrade Vince, um, Spoke to them. Those interventions there um, has caused us some serious debt, um, and we have to keep reminding ourselves that we, we are surviving in a, in, a, in a hostile economic climate. Yet we are able to push through and, and service our debt in time and do that. So, um, 
Mr. Speaker, we know, we know again that um, what affects us uh, as a small island state, um, not, not just in our economic uh, structure and our, our resilient movement, but we know that the climate change events can really mess up our ecosystems. And so we, we, are, we, are, we are hopeful that in the, in the coming months of the new budget that we will have no major weather event to affect us, so we can pull that through. We could have 110% implementation of those, at least 110%. Um, and we, I, I, I believe that the, this government is, is well equipped to, to achieve Brazil and Dominica by 2030. We can do that. Um, we have the skill set. We have the leadership. The governance is key. Leadership is everything. Um, and I know that we have, we have the staff. So just on, 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 on the ground level, really doing the hard work across the departments that I serve, uh, I, I, I'm happy to lead on. Well, I, I, maybe, I should maybe say chair on, because the, these people are really good at what they do. The, the people at Forestry and Wireless and Parks, the director, Mr. Britton, and his team, and the, the folks at the NEP. Sometimes uh, we, we speak about the NEP in a sort of flippant manner. Um, and we, we call all, all, sorts of, all sorts of names, but um, I mean, part of keeping Dominica clean um, is what the NEP do a major component of the NEP. But just to say that the NEP is not just that. We, are, we have people in the program who, who are in the public service, yes. who, 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 who are wetting their feet in the system, and, and they will be PSCs and the head department in the future. We have also major investments in the private sector that um, they, they, they don't get a large shares or dry money or in their hands, but they they, they are saving on their wage bills. And so they, they are part, they, are, they, they have farmers, they have restaurants, they are, they are in the, all of the service industries, and, and all of that also, Mr. Speaker, they are getting experiences. So, so we have to move away from just look at the NEP. I think it was my comrade, Julian Defoe, who said some parliaments about, uh, or said NEP. Uh, uh, that's, that's the way we say it. So, uh, so and I really want to thank those folks that do some very hard work. Um, keeping the country clean. Um, every major event, they come out in large numbers. We may maintain our highways from the airport to Roseau on the West Coast. They, 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 they do work across the communities. They help all the schools, the churches, playing fields. Um, whenever there's a major event, they, 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 work, they work with various ministries. Um, they have serious brigade that come to Roseau every now and then to ensure the stadium and the surroundings are clean. And, and we can do it. So we, we have to celebrate that. And I want to really shout out the, the uh, and salute the leadership at the NEP. Very small unit. This is on the team. Very small unit. But how dedicated. Who ensure that, um, that that they help us in our work as parents because um, it's a serious brigade that we have trying and, and they, they play a major part in, in the, the, the niche tourism brand. And so as we get ready for the World Creative Music Festival, You'll see them in action again. They'll be there out there. Where they'll, have, they'll have their vest on and their hard hats, and they'll be out there really, really um, doing it. So I just want you guys to encourage them to ensure that, um, that they feel that they're contributing to their country, because they are contributing to their country. And they, 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 those who are doing the, the really tough work on, in the hot sun, in the solar issue, that we, we do not um, discount their, their, their contribution. So Mr. Speaker. Um, so overall, I, I, I think our small economy of Waitikubuli, Dominica, um, has been better on the labor. And I'm happy to serve as a, as, a, as a member of parliament and as a minister, charged with a serious, serious ministry that really keeps um, the nature brand intact. I really want to thank my colleagues who are over here who, who banter over things. We joke about some serious things sometimes, but we know, we know that the hard work has to be done. Because the, the, the Dominican population has put full confidence in us. And so building a business country is all of us business. We are showing leadership. We are, we are drawing out the, 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 the scarce resources, the financial resources. But we need partnerships across the board. We need every citizen to play his or her part and not complain about what they're doing. Uh, it should be what we're doing. I'll say one last time before I close um, that um, environment protection is everybody's business and that the units 
um, that, that sit with the Indonesian environment. They're doing the work and they just need the support. And I'm really thankful for the opportunity to lead that ministry and to ensure that we continue to do the work. Because we need to, to continue to be resilient in Dominica. And as, as we, we, we um, magnified in 2019, we need to build a dynamic Dominica. And that, that dynamic Dominica is built on, on a solid foundation of, of environmental protection, sound fiscal policies, um, good management, and serious and dynamic political leadership. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much.